My name is Gene Plavnik. I'm with Heat Technologies, Inc. of Atlanta, Georgia, a Georgia state-based corporation since 1996. And I'll be talking about uh, technology of ultrasonic heating, drying, curing, etc., ultrasonic thermal technology. You'll see our logo, and uh, our logo shows uh, basically three letters, HDI, a straight line, and a sine wave. A straight line is um, supposed to be actually a red line, and it represents heat. A sine wave represents sound. So heat and sound meet at the same point and released on the process at the same time. And that's what our technology is all about. It's about taking heat, it's about generating sound, combining it together and releasing on a process at the same time. All our thermal all of our thermal systems are manufactured in the United States in the metropolitan Atlanta area. We uh, manufacture dryer uh, hardware, we manufacture control system that you see on the right. We design, develop, manufacture, and we also have ASC certification because from a quarter to 20 to 50 percent of the sales go to European Union. A little bit of history. We have we established in 1996 as a manufacturing company uh, uh, working with custom design thermal solutions. The alma mater of the technology was a pulse combustion which is a combination of sound and flame. And uh, we sell several systems based on, on this uh, uh, technology. But uh, we saw that benefits of technology that come from sound also a biggest obstacle on uh, its acceptance by customers. So by giving us several comments, uh, from receiving several comments from customers, started thinking, what are we doing? How do we improve it? And we started working basically on keeping the oscillations, but trying to remove the sound from the equation. So we keep the instability of heat and mass transfer, but yet we keep it on a level that is safe to for humans. That's how idea of culture sound came to our mind, and that's what we were working and finally developed. Technology was successfully commercialized. We obtained actually seven patents right now, if not eight, and uh, four or five of them already accepted in the European Union. We uh, deploy our technology to a variety of processes and variety of environments. This is a, a, a actually a, 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 a small representation of how technology may work. This is also a picture from our brochure. You can see that uh, um, there is a drying station on the, uh, uh, in light yellow. There is a little electric heater in red. There is a regenerative blower or source of air, if you wish, coming of air coming to the dryer. And then that, that air, that hot uh, air, uh, heat and, and, and mass of, of transfer uh, of the air and moisture is removed by exhaust. And you see that living air is blue because it's cooler. Most of the heat has been transferred to the material. Technology was actually conceptualized to dry film, to dry water-based inks, to dry water on thin, non-porous surfaces, such as films, so or water has no room to go. And of course, it's easier to dry on paper when you have a porous surfaces. Where do we apply this technology? We apply it uh, to actual drying, curing, heating, cooling, baking, and dehydration. And um, why is this for a variety of processes? In most of the cases, when you uh, deal with uh, industrial process, pure heating is only part of the equation, or pure drying. If you dry adhesive, cross-linking and interlinking of the um, adhesive needs to be present. So you deal with chemistry. And they were, that's where the curing comes to the equation. Sometimes you just need to preheat paper prior to printing. So you do just heating. And you're removing the moisture with this heating. In cooling applications, it's more or less the same as the heating applications, only with a negative sign.
It's the same heat transfer, advanced heat transfer. We also try to dehydrate fruit and, and bake breads with our technology. And here are the substrates uh, we work with. We work with specialty papers, we work with uh, uh, foils, we work with 3D molded fiber products with the uh, recycled paper, we work with aluminum, coating metals, coating aluminums. We work with uh, metals, composites. Um, we work with fruits and vegetables, we work with various food products. So why I'm here? Why I am saying this technology is good? What are the benefits of the technology? What are we actually, why are we better than any others? From the cross-cut of industries and variety of installations, we saw or crystallized five benefits of the technology. First benefit is a high throughput. Second benefit is a high energy efficiency. Operational benefits of small footprint when you need to install new equipment and you, uh, you, life pushes you to, uh, to, to increase your throughput, but you're limited on your real estate. Our equipment is extremely of small footprint, provide you with a high throughput, with high energy efficiency, very important benefit of uniformity of drying or heating across the web as well as low maintenance. Actually, maintenance managers are our best friends. What is that, um, you know, efficient ultrasonic heat and mass transfer? What does it do? It reduces your process time. It will help you to improve the quality of your process. It will increase your throughput. We have cases when we increase throughput from 50 or from 1.5 times to 3 times from 50% to 300%. Our technology doesn't have any moving parts or any electricity inside of the dryer chest. So it's very safe. Needless to say, it's it, uh, high, highly energy efficient and highly production efficient. What do we, do we see from the um, a variety of installations that we had? We see reduction of retained solvents from three to four times when we deal with solvent-based in, in coatings. Let's say uh, food packaging with solvent things. You don't want to buy chips that smell solvent. You want to buy chips that smell potato. So retained solvents is a big issue for food packaging and it slows down production sometimes. Reduction of energy required. It's your energy bill. That's your daily operational benefit. That's your operational cost. We can basically help customers to improve its profitability by switching from solvent-based things to water-based things without any loss of um, time and a loss of throughput. That will be benefit of uh, switching cost of the water-based thing to the cost of solvent-based thing, to shutting down your incinerator that uh, consumes fossil fuel. In uh, low temperature applications or thin film applications, let's say, we can shut down the uh, heat. We dry with acoustic air only. So technology offer you these benefits like reduction of emissions, switching from solvent to water, increasing throughput from three to four times on solvents. Sometimes we see our equipment in the range of one third of the standard footprint Sometimes it's 12 to 10 to 12 percent of the standard footprint. We apply our technology in three different ways. First, typically when we start the relationship with our customers, customer doesn't want to risk it all. He wants to buy our equipment, but he doesn't want to mess with existing equipment. It's called add-on. So we add a little piece of equipment and we increase throughput by you know, sizable amount, 20-25%, and we call it add-on. <clears throat> the second way of applying this technology is retrofit or replacement. We uh, can take your existing outside exhaust hood and replace it with our drying system inside, and by doing that, we will allow you to, to increase your throughput to improve your operations. And 
Third way we're applying our technology as a core technology. When customer have enough confidence, he is ready to buy new um, technological line. He approaches us and said, we want your dryers to be as a part of a line. Or if it's like coating line, for example, we want uh, to buy your coating line. The benefit is very simple. It's your short footprint and high throughput. Of course, environmental benefits is naturally uh, present because we use only electric energy, only clean energy, so to speak, not fossil fuel. These are examples of our product. On your left, you can see a dryer for 75 inches wide web, cold seal application, so-called. It's a, it's a food grade adhesive that you can uh, use daily in your blister packaging for cheese or ham or in your KitKat bar, for example. You can open the KitKat package, uh, um, um, take a bar, break a bar, and reclose it. The dryer in the center was sold to an Italian company to, to install on new equipment as a, a complete new installation. And this is kind of a multicolor system for a flexographic press. The dryer on the right, it's basically core technology, when no other technology is present, to dry uh, three-dimensional uh, molded fiber products. Could be also consumer product, uh, soles of shoes with adhesive on it, etc. So it's not a web-based product, it's, it's a... It's a piece, if you wish, best base product. The dryer, the blue dryer was um, a design and built to dry uh, about 120,000 products a day on the 24-7 format. How diverse we could be? This is a concave design dryer that we designed for a thin film applications where temperature is important and uh, in... Out of uh, 10 of these dryers sold, only two or three use heat. Seven of, seven of them do not use heat. Acoustic air dries the inks on it. This is a kind of a hybrid press that has solvent-based inks and water-based coating. Uh, the system operates 24-7 with planned maintenance shutdowns since 2013. Um, the only was place of, a piece of maintenance on that particular system was one of the blowers was replaced because it was, in a way, engineeringly abused for the company. They used it on higher throughput, and seven years later they had to replace a blower. Other than that, it's still in operation 24-7. So, and, you know, people ask, how does it work? I have to say that scientists were... Uh, investigating influence of sign on heat and mass transfer for a long time. Group of U.S. scientists took a ceramic plate, equipped it with thermocouples on top and bottom, and um, ran the acoustic device with and without acoustics. When acoustics was present, the heat transfer was 1.78 times better than without the acoustics. Group of Japanese scientists took a porous lightweight brick for refractories, for example, in some kind of a heavy ovens. They register its weight, they soaked it in water, and they registered, wiped out the excess and registered the weight again. And then they did the same thing. They ran the uh, acoustic device with and without uh, pulsations for one hour, and they weighed the uh, sample again. The water removal rate, the drying rate, when the um, acoustics was present was 2.78 times better than without the acoustics. Uh, this is actually goes very well with um, our data. In average, our system is three times as efficient as a standard one. And that's how it works. You know, I was working with that uh, new concept for a long time. We had a prototype, it was working, but it was too complicated. And coming from the industry, I knew that industry will not buy it. We need to do something simple. And the idea came to me in a pet store. When I took my 
youngest daughter who is aspiring chemist right now. She was in middle school that time. And um, to buy a micro compressor for one of your projects. And while, you know, walking in, in the pet stores that looks like um, a county municipal airport, maybe even bigger, I ran into a stand with uh, dog whistles. So this idea came to me immediately because I knew from my previous engineering practice how to design pulse combustion systems. This idea came to me that we need to completely redesign that this is the industry what industry will buy. This is very simple. It has no moving parts. It has no ceramic uh, piezo transducers inside and that will work. In six months we build a prototype and in 12 months maybe eight to 18 months, something like that. But the, the, in, the point is we left alone what we had. It was good for labs, but not good for production. And we build a system. We measured the level of acoustic oscillation. So we said, this is a product we're ready to go to market. And that's what we basically have. We have a dog whistle on steroids. This is kind of how I typically joke about our systems. Give you a couple of examples from um, applications. This is a um, about eight feet, no seven feet wide, rotogravure press that uh, uh, prints the decor. You can see that station uh, before the installation on the left and after the installation on your right. So the system on uh, uh, after installation is uh, about one and a quarter foot and the system one and a half foot and the system uh, basically um, before the installation is 24 feet and you can see that uh, basically with 20 percent of energy added energy we have 50 percent operational efficiency the system went from 300 feet a minute to 450 feet a minute with 80 kilowatt of energy. So, what industries? What uh, what industries we work? We work with cross cutting industries. We work with paper industry, paper converters, uh, flex compact packaging producers, food producers. We work with tape producers. We work with uh, um, coated metal products. Uh, we work with glass industry, with what is, again, I mentioned food industry. Uh, we work with uh, laminates, we work with uh, ink uh, uh, producers, we work with adhesive producers. Our technology is extremely beneficial when you, you dry adhesives. So some adhesive companies decided to kind of talk to us and team up with us. Um, uh, and this is kind of an ongoing process. We are not nothing kind of a written stone, but we we work with a cross cut of industries that are interested in improving their throughputs. Now, a couple of uh, case studies. What you see is a coating line for industrial tape productions in European Union. And uh, it produces um, um, tape for cross cut of industrial applications. And customer wanted to increase the line speed. It's a heavy coat coverage, about 40 GSM gram per meter squared dry, 80 gram per meter squared wet, um, limited to 60 meters a minute, 280 meters a minute. The system consumes about one megawatt of energy. It's indirect heating. The heat is generated by oil first, then it goes into heat air to, to uh, oil. Indirect heat exchanger preheats air. This air is delivered by blowers on the material. We added um, about one and a half foot of space. We actually utilize existing space and install our dryer that was consuming about 70 kilowatt of energy, 100 kilowatt installed. You can see this dryer on the left in a square and you can compare with the line you know, how long is the line and how long is our dryer on the right. As a result, we were able to increase line speed uh, by 42%, reduce energy intensity, which is very 
important factor. Sometimes end users don't really realize how much energy they spend per one square foot, one pound, whatever, thousand pounds of product. We reduced energy intensity by 22.5%. So with fraction of energy added, we improve throughput by 42%. Here's another example on water-based uh, inks and coatings. You can see a, a printing press, web printing press, with five colors, and customer, in order to obtain a proper concentration of color, a proper background color, was using first three stations. You can see where the people are, this is the first, second, and third station. They were used both for the same inks to get proper color. So customer said, can you help me to use one drying station only on a heavy coating operation? We did the calculations. Customer conducted the trials. As a result, we came with a solution. In order for customer to run the line speed at 220 feet a minute uh, with uh, heavy coverage, you can see 22 to 24 grams per meter square, 10 to 12 percent solids. We offered a small dryer with eight acoustic slots that we installed right after the coating. By doing that, we eliminated the first drying station second drying station and third drying station we were running it at needed line speed and customer because of that was able to get more orders that required more colors for his production so you know printing and coating on metallized surfaces with the in 15 uh, to 30 seconds what the regular customer does in minutes This is um, application that you can see our dryer with uh, um, kind of a, you know supplies that we used for food industry, for cosmetics industries. We try cosmetic, uh, it's called uh, press cake. Press cake is a thing, is a powder that is used in um, cosmetics industry for lipsticks, for creams, etc. For most of the ladies lines of cosmetic, cosmetics, and they, it's done today in batch processes at a very slow rate. We, we did in hours, in two hours, what standard technology does in days, from three to eight days. Food industry, roasting of nuts, cooling of nuts, um, snack, snack uh, production. Standard uh, roaster does a roasting in about 12 minutes on production scale. Our unit installed, uh, did it in three and a half minutes. We try to dry kiwi to show how efficient is acoustic drying. And sometimes, you know, from your everyday life, you go to supermarket, you buy, uh, let's say, dried pineapple from one company and dried pineapple from another company. And you can see that first pineapple didn't taste good, and second is, you know, just so flavorful, so tasty, you can stop eating it. The reason is that the second our company does the drying at lower temperature. When flavors, when aromatic hydrocarbons are still present, but they are very volatile, and they are afraid of temperature. So at a lower temperature, you are able to preserve these flavors and pass it on a customer. We try to do it with no heat. And uh, we put a portion of kiwi on a tray and we dried it in 90 minutes or 80 minutes to the shelf stable humidity, uh, moisture content. So it can be packaged and it can be um, sold in 80 minutes comparing to eight, six to eight hours in production. This is our setup. That's how it looks like. You can see with the red arrow our commercial scale dryer. With the white arrow on the right, it's a kind of single slot dryer. We mainly use 
uh, a commercial scale dryer and we also sometimes use small test unit. You can see on the left in light gray is a control panel. In blue it's a regenerative blower with a filter silencer and uh, a little shiny thing it's an electric high efficiency low pressure drop electric heater. So this is what I was saying and of course it has a conveyor that can run from 5 uh, 10 feet a minute to 450 460 feet a minute. As a summary, what does our technology bring to end user, to a customer? Increased throughput, increased small footprint, reliability, uh, low maintenance. As a benefit, increased line speed, small footprint of the thermal unit, reduced energy requirements, and in a lot of cases, we are able to reduce operating temperature of the, of the system, which we may reflect on uh, better air conditioning and lower air conditioning bill. So, this is how we do business. We introduce our technology, we present customers similar you know, web-based or personal-based uh, presentation. We execute mutual confidentiality arrangement. After it's executed, the customer is uh, uh, given us some design basics, what is the current engineering practice or business practice is, and uh, send us samples. Customers also set its goals. What do we want to accomplish? Then, based on that, we do giant customer trials, provide customers with estimate, and if it's all accepted, then we execute account. We prepare a formal proposal and execute a contract. This concludes my presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to address. Thank you very much for your attention.